Hi, I have a beef with President Trump. He made an announcement a while back and... No, no, this is not a political video. I'm not a politician and know nothing of a subject. But what can I say? I'm a simple man. I see someone talk about electronics and I have to rectify it. Now, to keep it simple, he expressed his dislike of the new power-efficient light bulbs and announced his new government support of the old incandescent light bulbs to increase their production. He provided a few reasons, such as... People said, what's with the light bulb? I said, here's the story. The light's no good. I always look orange. Which is of course true, because when the white light hits a surface, the surface absorbs many of the wavelengths and only reflects a few. Which is why we see the surface in a particular color. And so because he's orange, he looks orange. This is not a political video, I'm just stating facts and science. I thought he was joking at the beginning, but then he completed himself by saying... Good, I always look orange. <laughs> and so do you. The light is the worst. Okay then, that's a different claim. Although if everyone looks different, then no one looks different. So that's not a real problem. Then he made another complaint about the lights. But number two, it's many times more expensive than that old incandescent bulb. They have warnings. If it breaks, it's considered a hazardous waste site. It's gases inside. Which made me realize he's talking about CFL or compact fluorescent lights. Frankly, I don't like those lights either. So there is truth to his claims and we're kind of in the same boat. This is not a political video. It's not about if I dislike the president or not like him. But you know how it goes, you mention Trump and the whole world blows over. That's why this video is only sponsored by my patrons at patreon.com. Although I may lose a bunch of them now because of this. I shouldn't be afraid to talk about science. It's just about science. So spasm like now if you agree. Spasm. Is that how people like my videos? By involuntary muscle twitch? <laughs> you think the only difference between light bulbs is light color and efficiency? Wrong! I created a table of many different parameters and I'll score every light bulb to see which one gives the best user experience. There are four different major types of light to check. First one is the classic incandescent light. There is a thin tungsten wire in there that heats up with electricity and glows. The bulb is filled with nitrogen or argon gas. Pretty harmless. You almost can't buy these in Canada anymore. Good! Second type is halogen. Its structure is very similar to incandescent, just that it's filled with halogen gas, which makes it run brighter, so it's over 30% more efficient than incandescent. They are typically made as spotlights, but they also make them in these regular shapes too. Let me show you how. See this? They actually put a smaller halogen bulb in a bigger glass to make it look normal. Next is CFL or compact fluorescent light. You have seen these big fluorescent lights in offices. They figured out a way to spin them into this compact form. There is mercury inside the glass that vaporizes and glows bright under high voltage. Mercury vapor under high voltage generates tons of ultraviolet light. Inside the glass is coated with phosphor that absorbs most of the UV light and glows in visible spectrum. I'm not a fan of CFL light. Same as my comrade President Trump. Just joking. And then there's the LED lights made of a bunch of tiny light emitting diodes made of silicon that glow. These are the latest technology, my favorite, and our markets are flooded with these. Good! Now all these can shine with different colors, sometimes assisted by painting the glass and sometimes by different glowing material. But for CFL and LED lights that make regular white lights used at home, they can come in a wide temperature range of white. The typical range is from 2700 Kelvin to over 6000 K, with 2700 K being the warmest with most reddish tones, same as incandescent or halogen, to 6000 K being the coldest with most bluish tones used by morgues and butcheries and psychos. Enough talking! Let's talk some more and fill the table with the properties of my lights. All these lights output a level equivalent to a 60 watt incandescent bulb. Power usage is simple, I just write it from their boxes. Incandescent is 60 watts, obviously. Halogen is 43 watts, CFL is 13 watts, and LED is 8.8 .8 watts. This is a bad parameter, the less is better, so I call it B1. Light level for a 60 watt incandescent can be as high as 800 lumens, but it's typically 700 or less. Lumens is the unit of luminous flux or the total amount of light emitted by a lamp. 
for this halogen it's 750, for my CFL 850 and for my LED is 800 lumens. It's a good property, the higher the better, so I call it G1. Length of life for incandescent is a typical 2000 hours, for halogen it's half that. For my CFL it's 10,000 hours and for LED is 15,000 hours. Light quality in my opinion is about what the light is made of, as in the spectrum. And for that we need to do some testing. So I got my hands on a special light sensor thanks to my friend Steve who helped me borrow it. In other news, he actually has a neck. You know how digital cameras have 24 million pixels? This one is a single pixel, but it's a special pixel. You know, digital cameras can only see red, green and blue, but this one sees every single color of the spectrum. So using this, we can see what every light is made of. You might be surprised to know that even if the light color is the same, it might be made of different light components. So this is what we get. We have a chart that's light intensity versus wavelength. We get a little bit of UV light and then the visible range and then the rest is infrared. First let me see if I can measure the sunlight. I have to turn off all my lights. Here we go. Although it's a bit cloudy today so it might be on the colder side. And you see it's not very smooth. It's because the gases in the atmosphere absorb different frequencies of light and create notches in the wavelength. And maybe I should stick it out outside the window because the glass itself filters the infrared light. It's a cloudy day anyway, so there is not much infrared. In, out, in, out, in, out. It's interesting that the white light doesn't have a flat spectrum at all. Now let's try my four light bulbs starting with the incandescent light as my baseline. This is my favorite light color. It's warm and nice. And here it is. Tons of infrared light, but a very smooth peak that covers the entire spectrum. Sun, lamp, sun, lamp. Lamp, sun, lamp. So it's wasting a ton of energy radiating in infrared because we can't see it anyway. It might be just helping bees and snakes. <laughs> Next light is halogen bulb. And here is the spectrum, very similar to the incandescent light bulb. A very smooth peak, nice and warm and has tons of infrared. Although the color feels a little bit colder. Halogen, incandescent, halogen, incandescent, halogen, incandescent. Now to my least favorite light bulb, CFL. Although they did try to match the warmness to the incandescent light bulb. And here it is. Oh, oh my god, spikes. Spikes everywhere. There is even a large spike in the UV region. Let's lower them. There you go. So the white light is made of three spikes, three major spikes in red, green and blue regions. And the red spike is quite orange. Maybe our little orange guy wasn't wrong after all. Of course the CFL has a warm light. I assume in colder ones the blue spike is much larger and so the spike in the UV light. That's why I say CFL has my least favorite light quality because it's made of spikes. Like I said, every surface absorbs a bunch of wavelengths and only reflects a few and that makes the color of the surface. So if a surface reflects a certain wavelength that falls between these spikes, it could appear too dark, although it is not dark. Or if it matches these spikes, it could appear too bright. So although the CFL light has many spikes, it may not light up the environment uniformly. And it also radiates low levels of UV light that's known not to be great for health. And now the LED lights. First let's try the cold 500k LED. Here we are, no spikes in the UV region, expected spikes in blue and a much wider one in green and red region and then unexpected red spikes? What are they using? Red LED lights? Let's try the warmer 2700k LED. Wow, much smaller blue spike but huge red spikes. Let me just check a cold single LED light and see what it looks like. There you go, this is what I expected, no red spikes. These people might be using red LEDs to adjust their tone. See, the way white LEDs work is that they are actually made of blue LEDs and like CFL are coated with a phosphor layer. The blue light goes through and some of it is absorbed by the fluorescent layer that glows in red and green spectrum. It is not as spiky as CFL light and creates close to no UV light. Let's try the IKEA warm lights. There you go, this is what I expected, a nice and smooth peak covering the entire spectrum, except for the blue spike that is. Why is Philips using red LEDs? I hate spikes! Oh, just saw a report from the Lighting Research Center of RPI stating that new phosphors are being developed to improve color rendering. 
Hmm, so they intentionally added a red spike to make the light look better and Philips is the newer technology? I still hate spikes and think IKEA of Sweden did a better job of emulating an incandescent light. Incandescent IKEA Philips. Incandescent Philips. IKEA Philips. IKEA. Incandescent. Okay, let's continue with the table. For light quality, incandescent is a 1 as the baseline. Halogen is very similar and is a 1. CFL has a very spiky spectrum and radiates low levels of UV that can irritate your skin if you sit too close, have sensitive skin, or have a high UV level lamp. Although newer technology can improve it, but we still saw UV on this one, so I give it half a score. LED's spectrum can be very similar to incandescent, but it can still be spiky, so I give it a 0.9. For durability, you drop incandescent, CFL, or halogen, they can break and die. But halogen is especially more sensitive. Halogen light capsule is made of quartz rather than ordinary glass to be able to handle higher temperatures. Touching it with your salty oily fingers will significantly weaken it. LED on the other hand, the cover is made of plastic. It doesn't matter if it breaks. As long as the electronics is not broken, it runs. So it's like 10 times better. So if incandescent is 1, halogen is 0.75. Especially for those that you can actually touch the quartz. You just have to be careful not to shake or touch it. CFL is also a 1. LED is much stronger, but it's not that big of a deal. You just have to be more careful with the other ones. So I give it one and a half. Cost wise, I was surprised that the incandescent is around $2 now. Used to be around the loony, eh? Maybe it's because they don't sell them much anymore. Good! Two and a half dollar for halogen, four dollar for CFL, and LED is getting much cheaper, around three and a half dollars for the dimmable option. A dollar thirty cents at IKEA for non-dimmable option. Sweden! For light temperature, incandescent and halogen are both around the same, so one. CFL and LED have a much larger range to choose from. But who cares? Warm is the best option, unless you're a psycho. And don't forget, blue light can create excessive glare and flare in human eye compared to red light. Especially dark at night when the eye pupil is wide open and can make it hard to see details. So go warm or go home. It's good to have options, but to me it's not a big deal. I go straight for warm, so I give them 1.2. For dimmability, both incandescent and halogen are dimmable, but CFL is not. Let's say 20% of the lights at home need to be dimmable and CFL can be used on the rest, so I lower its score to 0.8. LED can be dimmable, but the price doubles, so I give it a 0.9. Hazardous material is bad, so higher score is worse. Both incandescent and halogen are made of glass and inert gases. Glass breaks, it can cut your finger, so I give them both a 1. CFL, you can also cut your finger with glass, but it's also made of the poisonous mercury, so it's worse, and I give it a 1.3. LED, eh, I guess you can cut your finger with plastic, it's better, but I'll give it a 0.9. Good, now that our table is filled, I'll normalize the numbers by dividing every row by the value of the incandescent light for that row. And this is the normalized table. Now I'll calculate a consumer experience factor, which I set it to be equal to the multiple of all the good parameters divided by all the bad parameters. And so incandescent gets a 1, as expected. Halogen gets a measly 0.45. All parameters considered, it's only less than half as good as incandescent. But CFL with all its imperfections is still 5 times better than incandescent. Still a winner. But LED is 54 times better than incandescent. 10 times better than CFL. Forget about halogen. LED is clearly way ahead of everything else for consumers. Nothing even comes close to LED lights. This is what everyone should be using. So back to our neighboring president, he's clearly talking about CFL lights being bad with their poisonous gases and funky light spectrum. But not only CFL is still much better for consumers than the incandescent, we are well past that in the LED era. Not only switching back to incandescent is terrible for the environment because of much larger waste of energy, it's 54 times worse than LED for the consumers. I'm sure there are tons of other world leaders making terrible environmental decisions. But if you have learned anything from the current pandemic is that our actions don't just affect us, but each other. Everyone in the world should say no to excessive inefficient power consumption. It's the scientific common sense to save the planet. 
So use LEDs, please choose wisely. For me, this is not a political video.